Hello and welcome to the 53rd video in this series programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to look at uh, saving a, a principal variation in the console and then printing it out to the console to try and sort of mimic what will happen in the search just to show you how it works. We need a definition in def.h to define max depth as 64 because that's the maximum depth that the program will try and search to and we'll need that later anyway. And inside the board structure, so the definition here of the S board structure, add in underneath the PV table, add in a PV array with max depth as the size. OK, so to get our array out of the table and into this array before then printing it to the screen, all we have to do is probe for a move. If we get one, make that move, and then probe for another move, and if we get one, make that move, and so on and basically walk through the best variation that the program has found. However, each time we retrieve a move, because we're searching in a, a broad tree, could end up, as I explained at the end of the last video, with a situation where we've actually saved an illegal move into the table because we've been unlucky and the same index number is used for two different positions. So we need some kind of function which tests whether a move actually exists. And funny enough, I've written one and it's called move exists and I'm just going to put the whole thing in here because it's code we've seen basically completely before somewhere in the program it takes the board as an argument and a constant move of course the board this time won't be constant because we're going to generate all the moves on the board and then make the moves so the board will be altered in the process of this function but we make a move list generate all the moves then do the standard stuff as in the perf and other functions in the program loop through those moves if the move we've got isn't legal we continue if it is legal we take it back and then just see if that move was equal to the move that we sent in if it was we'll return our true we know that the move exists on the board if not then we return false and this move exists needs obviously to go into the move gen section of the functions here because we're going to be using it outside move gen like so OK, the next thing we need to do is we actually need to look at the, getting the principal variation itself. The way this will be done is at the end of every search, once we've finished the search, we will call a function which basically fills this PV array up to max depth with the moves from the table. And the way the search works in the program is because we only store the moves that uh, beat alpha, it should, in the table, have our best line it's found. It'll, of course, have lots of other lines that it's stored on the way through the tree, but it should have our best line as, we ba if we, as we've backed up through the search inside the table. Sometimes it doesn't due to clashing of indexes, but it really, it, usually it does have some, at least some of the line. So we need a function that actually fills this array. And I've called this function get PV line, and I'm going to go through this in sort of more step by step than I did with the uh, the last function. So, atop a PV table, I'm going to declare this function right at the top here, and just close off the function. So the first thing is it takes an argument of what depth we want to print the PV to. So say we've just done in our iterative deepening we've searched to depth 6 then we'll send in a 6 into here because we don't want to show a PV that's any longer and there are circumstances where we would have a longer PV but I'll explain about that when it comes to the search and the first thing we want to do in our current position obviously is probe the PV table and we're going to return from this function the count of moves we actually managed to put into the array so the next thing to do is basically to loop whilst this move isn't no move because you remember when we probe we return no move if we don't find a move so I've got this here loop the while loop here which isn't very complicated it says while we haven't got no move from our probing and count is also less than the depth that we specified we'll assert here that count is less than max depth otherwise we're in trouble because we're going to be going outside our PV array on the board and now we make use of our move exists function and we say if the move exists the move the first move we've probed exists on the board make the move add the move into the PV array and increment the count 
post increments, important to note here. And then get the next move in the table. So now we've made the move. So say the first move was e2, e4, we'd have made that. Now we'd probe for the next one. And the current position, obviously, is with e2, e4. And this keeps going until either we've reached our depth or we couldn't find any more move by the probe or the move was illegal. In fact, I'm just realized I've got a slight bug in here that I've forgotten to say that if the move wasn't legal, then we already have to break out of the while loop. So I'll just do that here. OK, so once we've broken out of the while loop, for whatever reason, either we had an illegal move, so we'll stop following the line, or we've reached the count. The next thing we need to do is something that's easy to forget when you're programming this function which I can tell you from, from experience. I'll just copy this and drop it in here. We have to take back all the moves that we've made to return to the original position where we wanted to get this principal variation array. Otherwise, for instance, if we're iterative deepening and we've gone to depth 5, we then get our PV array, then we want to search de depth 6. Well, we need to start, obviously, from the start position again and not uh, from 5 moves down our best found line. So we say whilst ply is greater than naught, we'll take a move in the position. Because remember, every time we make move, play gets incremented by 1. And then we simply, at the bottom of here, return the count. So that's how we put our PV into principal variation into the PV array on the board. And now that all's remained is really to hack something into this while true loop here that we can have a very quick look at retrieving the PV from a phantom principal variation. And I've made some alterations to what was already there. I've added in a max and a PV num integers here, which we'll be using. And here, when the move has been passed, I'm storing this move as a theoretical principal variation move. Now, of course, this doesn't really represent what happens in the search, but it's just for the point of showing you that the moves get stored and then we can retrieve them. And the retrieval we're going to do in this section here, I've commented out perf test. And we're going to, when we press P, actually do the retrieval. And I've got the code here already done, so otherwise this video would take far too long for actually performing the retrieval. And, oh, good old tabs. So what we do is, first of all, we set max to the count when we get the PV line. And I've fixed the depth to a depth of four here, because I'm going to make four moves on the board. I then print to the screen how many moves we've found. And then I'm going to loop up to, because everything's zero index, remember, one less than max, and simply from the PEV array, take this move and print it to the board, and then print a new line. So it's not very difficult, it's just stepping through our PV array, taking the moves out that were stored inside the PV array on this line here, in the PV function. So I'll just save that now and hold my breath and go to make. Good, and it makes. And I'll run the program. So just expand the screen slightly. So it's asking for a move. So let's enter E2, E4. And let's enter E7, E5. And we'll enter A2, A3, and H7, H6. OK, so these should now have all been stored inside our PV. Now let's imagine we were backing up through a search. So we take back the four moves. And now we're at, let's say, the start of the next loop of our search, and we've done a depth 4 search, and we have a best line. Now if I let, press P, it's going to then get the PV line, and then print the line of moves. And as you can see here, I've pressed P, and it's gone in, and it's found our E2, E4, E7, E5, A2, A3, and H7, H6 from our table. So that's a sort of schematic, top-down view of the way the PV line will work. This is exactly how it will be retrieved when we come to doing the search at the end of each iteration to print to the screen. But it's not how the PV is actually saved. It saves a move in the PV table each time, irrespective of wherever it is in the tree, it beats alpha. And what happens is, as you back up through the tree, you should end up in this table with your best line somewhere in the table that you can then retrieve in this manner. So I hope that hasn't been too confusing and it makes sense. It isn't very difficult code. The most difficult code was in the last video where we did the probing and the storing of the move. This was simply getting it out. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.